Uh, tēnā koutou katoa, ngā mahi o te wāki a koutou katoa, e uri te tūru ao o Hāmoa, ko tōlu matanawe Barbara Amerisiana Queenie Makuati Afi tū to oku ingoa, a.k.a. Barbs, a.k.a. Beyonce. Um, <coughs> tēnei au e tūnei, um, hei hono ngā ki ngā wā o no mata, tainu ki tēnei wā tonu, uh, ki te whakaputa ngā uri whakatipu, ki te whai au ki te au marama, nō reira um, tēnā koutou, Tēnā koutou and bula. Um, so my mahi speaks of me being a very, very beautiful and proud Samoan, um, but it also speaks of me standing here in front of you, and normally it's to my community, but this is my digital community. I'm giving all of myself um, and acknowledging all of those that have come before, um, while we as a collective um, start to create for those that, that are to follow. Oh, fudge. That's right, I forgot I was doing this. Um, so it's an honour to be here and to, stand, um, and, to, and to stand here in front of you. So thank you for letting me come to have a kōrero. Um, so I suppose very much around the honouring of this project um, is the creating of the future. And this is where I am very, very proud to work at Tamaki Paengahira. The Pacific Collection Access Project is a living example of what more, of what a more informed and I suppose honouring future should look like. Um, and I have to acknowledge Tamaki Paengahira for being brave enough to tell toko and honour my people and my ancestors in this way and through this project. Naively, I thought um, that a lot of um, these kind of projects in the glam sector um, included community at the start, but it's a beautiful way to start that kaupapa. Um, so the success of PCAP has very much been because of the communities. They have actually co-developed and co-created this kaupapa that we are very, very honoured to share. So for those of you who don't know what um, PCAP is, um, um, Tamaki Painga Hira has a world-class Moana Pacific collection with over, over 30,000 taonga. Um, over the next three years, we're looking at 5,000 of those taonga from these beautiful, from 13 beautiful island nations here. So we started with the Cook Islands and we are now into Fiji. Um, we have an amazing team working on the project, um, some amazing catalogers, some who are in the whare, um, a conserv conservator, um, storage technicians and also some of the photographers who are in the whare. But the uniqueness and specialness of this project has definitely been our community. Through Kanohi Kite Kanohi and Talanoa, our communities have gifted us knowledge holders that will speak for their taonga and for their ancestors. Um, a lot of this is based on Te Oleva, which is our Pacific um, strategy at Tamaki Paengahira. Um, Te Oleva is a philosophical culture based on a Samoan Moana Pacific perspective on cultural value to help us ensure that our museum is a respectful, relevant and an engaging place for all people, including those of Moana Pacific descent. Our Te Oleva Pacific strategy, strategy to me is the foundation for PCAP. Um, Te Oleva was created by our museum, um, Moana Pacific staff at the time, and it's just a really beautiful, pro, um, a really beautiful strategy. And so these are our Te Oleva principles that are we trying that we are trying to honour through the mahi at Tamaki Paengahira, but also especially through the mahi that we're doing through PCAP. So one of the kōreros that definitely always comes up is, you know, is, is how do we honour Te Oleva when, you know, when we're not all Moana Pacific? And it's always hard to talk about a philosophy that is embedded in my DNA, in my upbringing, and also lovingly, lovingly, softly beaten into me. <laughs> but we tried to make it relevant to what it means to us working at, at the Auckland Museum. So for us as Tamaki Paengahira, our vātapu ia, our sacred relationship, as kaitiaki, is to and for our collection. But we also have a very important and sacred responsibility to all of our communities, including our Moana Pacific communities. 
And as Kaitiaki, we are, we are responsible for being the connectors, the bridge, and providing opportunities for our communities to come and connect with their taonga, oh. understanding for some of our communities that our collection is sacred because they are their, their ancestors. So our roles are much larger because of that vātapu ia, because of that modi, and because of that spiritual vā. And therefore, we are responsible for creating that culturally, spiritually, and physically, and I suppose digitally, safe space for them to come and be. So honouring the voice. Um, this project appealed to my servant heart, someone who was born to serve and to honour all of my ancestors and to honour yours. Um, but it also makes me realise that we as a collective need to take responsibility to honour their voices, acknowledging that their, their ancestors, their, these creators, and those that have lovingly gifted to the museum so that we can enjoy today. We are learning to create this safe space for each other, but we also need to ensure that we honour their voices. So the success of this project um, has been because of com our communities, and I can truly say it's just absolutely humbling every day. Um, my heart, you know, the, the warmth, the beauty, the, the love, the sacredness that comes into the whare every day when our communities are in the whare. Um, we had this little girl, and so this group here um, is um, the M um, we had MPP Language Week launches, and one of the little girls walked in and she goes, oh my gosh, and she goes, that's my nana's kolosi. You know, just to have that kind of beauty in the whale. Um, We've just had so many amazing experiences. We've had three generations of one Fano actually standing over one of their taonga and the papa sharing to all of them just how things were made because he would have seen it when he was growing up. We um, had... Um, a beautiful little girl during one of the, oh sorry, so this is actually one of our knowledge holder sessions. Um, and our knowledge holder sessions, I can't speak to the sacredness that actually gets gifted in that space. And so this is where the community have actually gifted the knowledge holders. They've actually come up with the people that they believe are the cultural experts that hold the traditional cultural, the real, but also that mana within the community to be able to speak for their tanga. And that space is so is so sacred, and it's sacred because a lot of these tongue have not been touched by a Fijian hand or by a cookie hand for probably you know over a hundred years, and so I can't. And so yeah, it's just a really beautiful moment to be able, and, and I feel very blessed to be able to stand in that space. Um, since we launched officially, kind of in May last year, I think we've had over four thousand people come through PCAP, and we've probably had over hundred and sixty visits. I love this picture because the guy in the blue shirt, um, blue jacket isn't actually part of the group, but he comes up to me and he goes, I saw the colour, I want to be part of this. And I was going, eh. <laughs> <laughs> and so then, but, so, but I was walking them out to the bus, so he followed us out because he won one of photos, bless his heart. <laughs> and so this is um, one of the launches for the Cook Island, um, the Cook Island group. And, um, and I've got to say, I've never ever seen so many over 65 year olds with so much technology in my whole life. <laughs> And so they not only had their phones, but they also had their chargers, which I had to climb under the table to, to go and charge. Um, but they also had um, their iPads as backups. <laughs> um, and, this, um, and this is another group that we've had, the Rotumans, who just lit up our, our whare, honestly. Um, but I had a little girl, um, so, so when they came in as a thank you for, um, for us hosting them, and um, they asked if they could do a performance, and so I said, oh, how long? And they said, 45 minutes, and I thought they were joking. <laughs> but, but after an hour, they were st still going, and they were amazing. But I had a little girl come up to me, and she had a note, and then um, she goes, oh, and she goes, um, this is for the performers. Um, I want to say thank you for your beautiful dancing and singing, um, go, and I'm so happy that I came to the museum today. And I was like, oh, thanks. <laughs> Um, so part of our Fijian, so for every single um, of the 13, for everyone that comes through, um, we ask the community to gift us a name that encapsulates what it means for them in their deal. And for our beautiful Fijians, it's the Nayao Vakaviti Na Ka Marangiti. Um, so the success of this project is because of these beautiful people. So I'm just going to play something from them, hopefully.
uh, that feeling of um, coming into this wonderful house um, that's looking after all our treasures, not just Fiji, but the whole of Pacifica in this case. Mm. Um, <clears throat> I was honoured to be asked to be part of this project and also I came with a hidden motive. Um, I wanted to look at the things to also educate my own family, my own household, that these things were here for them and uh, my grandchildren <laughs> to come. <laughs> that, you know, there is a place where they can come and um, say, yes, this is mine, this belongs to me. The reason why we came up with the name because of the word uh, Yao uh, means treasures. Uh, so what we see in front of us here, uh, Yao, and Vakaviti means of Fijian origin. Um, so that's the first part of it, which is Naya Vakaviti. Um, Naka Marengeti means to, something to be treasured, to preserve. Um, mm. And I think all encompassed in that is the thought of the future, yeah? Um, all of these treasures from the past um, to preserve for the future generations. Yeah, so in a nutshell, Naeo uh, Wakaviti Naka Marengeti can be defined as uh, Fijian treasures that are treasured. I think Auckland Museum is quite the leader in um, this type of program, yeah, because mm -hmm. I'm with the old thought of like, you go to a museum, you look, <clears throat> but you're not allowed to see or touch and you hear of um, many other treasures that are stored here. And we were told about the program, and I thought, wow, we're actually going to get to see all of that? Mm -hmm. It's like, that's, you know, unheard of. And so, yeah, just the thought of um, coming in and seeing a lot of these treasures from, you know, you see it in a book, you read and you learn about it in school, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. to actually come and see the objects and, like, the numbers of them and to actually touch them are oh, just amazing. I know it's quite a real, real honour to be a part of it. And last week what was interesting was grandparents bringing their grandchildren and I had a number of emails that came through was that their little grandchildren just couldn't stop talking the whole night <laughs> even in the car when they were going home one grandmother said oh my little granddaughter keeps saying oh so grandma I'm Fijian and it was so lovely that the program at the museum validated that part you know to know that you know they came here and they said wow these things takes me back you know to my childhood memory yeah um, I've really enjoyed my time here with um, PCAP and uh, just being around all our Fijian treasures yeah it's been such a joy I think it's um there's yeah, quite a buzz in the community and um, I think Dr. John Jonathan of from the Cook Islands uh, former teacher of mine um, he uh, made a comment once that um, he believed cultural preservation and a lot of um, uh, this will be led by most islanders who live overseas. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just been illustrated with this program here because, I mean, the culture is somewhat alive in the islands, but it's taken for granted so much, mm -hmm. you know, because it's surrounded um, by, uh, surrounded, it surrounds you all the time. Um, so I think it's such a crucial role that. Um, we're going to play here, mm -hmm. and I think this is going to filter back to the islands. You know, once they mm -hmm. see how we've responded and reacted to the program, mm -hmm. um, it's definitely going to, like, like Joanna mentioned, it's really opened up. <clears throat> A lot of the um, elderly have said, well, I grew up with this, and then their thoughts are directed to the little ones. Oh, they didn't, you know, mm -hmm. they haven't had that experience. So it's going to get them to think, what can mm -hmm. I do to help them have the same experience? Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's, that's, Oh, you know, it's been yeah. such a really good, um, yeah, good role. And thanks to social media, you know, that are connecting, um, you know, the whole global Fijian village. Mm -hmm. And everyone is all part of this, you know, and everyone is talking about it. And it's cutting through all the age group and all the tribes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think the younger Fijians are, will now be proud to be a Fijian. Because, you know, they're learning more about themselves and it's a beautiful thing. Um, so, um, 
a lot of the amazing, amazing knowledge that is being gifted um, as part of PCAP. Um, I suppose as, as a daughter of the Moana and a daughter of Samoa, I realise its sacredness and that it has been generations built, generations protected, but also generations carried. Um, but one of the other things that has um, that has been happening a lot um, with um, through PCAP um, is what I like to call the whisper. Um, so we had this beautiful matua um, come in recently, and it was a three-hour visit. Um, but this particular papa just, you know, he was just really quiet. And I love the quiet ones because of the, you know, no, I mean, I do love quiet ones. But um, he just, he just, he just kept walking around the table, and he just kept looking, and he just kept crying. And I could just, yeah, you, know, you just have that connection where you just feel like he's just, you know. But he was so emotional, and probably after the first hour, he started whispering in my ear. So we would be talking about certain things, but then he just kept whispering. He kept whispering, and he was like, oh, and he was going no, and he goes. They're saying that the sword, um, you know, that, that all the sword has to do is, is touch the skin and they will die. But it's not because of the poison, it's because of the, the words that are spoken on it. You know, and he just kept doing this whisper and I just felt really, I just felt really, you know, I just felt really crazy. No, I felt really, really special for the fact that he felt that he could trust he could trust my ears, he could see into my eyes and he just made that connect and so after a while he looked at me and he goes, oh, and he goes, okay, and he goes, I will give it to you and I'm like, and I go, what? And he goes, I will I will share with you and I go, oh, no, Papa. And he goes, I share for here and I go, this whale isn't ready for that kind of sacredness. For a lot of our Moana Pacific communities, um, certain parts of our tradition, of our culture is carried by one particular family, so it's carried generations down. And so, you know, while I love the digital world, because I know this is the only way that we can get a lot of our, our messages and a lot of, you know, um, a lot of the taonga out there, um, certain parts of, of, of the whisper needs to be um, honoured. And, and I love how we're having these kind of corridors because this is going to start the corridor to ensure that a lot of the whispers are protected and protected right, especially with my friend Sarah Powell. Um, so, so how do we ensure that the ancestors' mana is, is honoured online? So this amazing woman, Anna Bessie, came from all the way from Utah. She has a charter school. And, um, and she was just blown away by what she could see. But what she kept saying is that, you know, we don't realise how lucky we are. We don't realise how lucky we are. And then she posted this, which kind of just, you know, just really humbled me. Um, you know, and she kept thinking about the students at her academy and how important these kind of projects are because these kids are never going to have access to it. You know, they're not going to come to Utah to engage with their taonga and their ancestors, but they'll be able to see it online, which is just a really, which is, yeah, which is just a really beautiful thing. Part of our project, PCAP, is very much around honouring the, the real. And so this Ta'iri Iri is now going to, you know, people from all around the, the Moana and around the world will be able to search for it in its own deal, which is just a really awesome way to honour the real and the and the ancestors that, that made it. And these are some of our beautiful taonga that we have in Tamaki Paingahira. So I just want to thank you for letting me come to share and I hope it helped and no questions. Kia ora.